Welcome back to the Relaxing Ghost Channel here on YouTube. Today we have episode 31 of the Attitude Era review series, WWF No Mercy 1999. This happened in Cleveland, Ohio at the Gund Arena. October 17th, 1999, we had 18,752 in attendance. Really good pay-per-view, I'll tell you that. Um, we had eight, nine matches on the main card. A ladder match, a no-holds-barred match. Some good stuff going on in the later stages of 99. Um... It's been too long since I've done a review for this series. I'm going to crack the whip here and we're going to get down to business. So, we got the Godfather versus Midian opening up the show. This was a decent opener. Midian didn't want no hoes and Godfather didn't have any farm animals. So Godfather decides he's just going to kick his ass. And that's exactly what it happened. Viscera kept interfering. Uh, you know, 500 pounds of Viscera. You got Jim Ross, Jerry Lawler on the commentary team. Uh, Midian is pretty much taking this match here. Godfather makes a quick block, hits the whole train, and and that was it. Whole train wins the match here in uh, the opening contest. We see uh, clips from Sunday Night Heat with Triple H, and he's coming to the arena. He pulled the trick on SmackDown where he said a snake bit his face, and he came out on SmackDown. His whole face was like purple from this snake bite. Um, luckily, it was all a ruse on Stone Cold. And he put the boots to Austin at the end of that SmackDown. Next up would be the Women's Championship match. Ivory defending against the Fabulous Moolah. And this is uh, hilarious to watch. You know, watching this, I had no clue it, it, back in 99 who Mae Young, who Fabulous Moolah was. And Jerry Lawler would just be making jokes about everything. This is like slow motion and uh, all these funny things. This is an awful match. It gets minus one star from Meltzer. Um, May Young's getting involved. Um, Ivory goes for the belt shot, hits May Young. And Moolah with one of the worst roll-ups for a three. And we got a new women's champion. Fabulous Moolah. <laughs> yeah, minus one star. That was no good. Women have come a long way. And, you know, no offense to Fabulous Moolah or Mae Young. The, the women's division in 99 was mediocre at best. Third match of the night. The New Age Outlaws versus the Holly Cousins. You know, this is just a good old, you know, hard-hitting match here. Hardcore Holly and Crash. Uh, Crash Holly, fairly new in the WWF here. You know, they're, you know, beating the hell out of each other every now and again. And Hardcore Holly, one of the best drop kicks I ever saw. This guy is just amazing. You know, I think Randy Orton racks up there with uh, one of the best drop kicks as well. And the Holly Cousins, they're isolating the road dog. Uh, Billy Gunn gets the hot tag with the jackhammer. And the Hollies slide the chair and Billy hits the Famouser on the chair and they get disqualified. So the Hollies win the match here. So, decent way the DQ kind of kept both teams even. Um, it would be important to note that Kurt Angle had a dark match on the pay-per-view, as well as, I think, the Dudley Boys. 
unless I'm thinking of Survivor Series. I'll have to double check that later um, before the Survivor Series review. Fourth match of the night is for the Intercontinental Championship. A rematch from Unforgiven. It's a good housekeeping match between Jeff Jarrett and China. Little did we know behind the scenes, you know, Jeff Jarrett was leaving the company. He held Vince up for some money, uh, about $300,000. It's big money. Probably uh, close to a million dollars today, or, you know, pretty close to it. I actually really like this match. I'm a I'm a big fan of the hardcore stuff, the tables, the trash cans, all that cool stuff. In this match, we got all household objects. So we got, you know, ironing boards. We got kettles, pots and pans. There's salami out there. <laughs> um, there's the other food. China misses an elbow drop off the apron. She goes through a table. Um, there's, there's fish here. Jeff Jarrett locking on the figure four and, and yeah, she makes it to the ropes. Uh, Miss Kitty here is preparing pies and China ends up knocking Jarrett with these pies. They're making a cake with eggs and all this stuff. Jeff Jarrett goes outside, grabs the IC title, or it might have been Kitty who gave it to him. Cheap shot to China. One, two, three. Jarrett retains the IC title. Scab referee comes out. Uh, Dr. Tom Pritchard, he's the head scab official, or he was. And you can't do that. The IC title's not a household item. So we restart the match. China smashes the guitar over his head, and we got a new intercontinental champion, China. The first woman, the only woman, to win the intercontinental heavyweight championship. This was a really big moment at the time. Um, really cool match. You know, um, you know, China, maybe not the most technical, whatever. Um, I always thought she was really cool. And... You know, say what you will about Jarrett. He was also pretty good. So I thought they had pretty good chemistry here. Um, you know, Jarrett would go to WCW. He would become a, you know, a multi-time world champion there. Fifth match of the night. We got the British Bulldog versus The Rock. And this is not your traditional Bulldog. This is the Bulldog in jeans. Not too flashy for the Bulldog. This match was quick. It was over fast. Um, we see the Bulldog hit a power slam for two. His That's his finishing move. Rock hits the rock bottom. People's elbow for the three. Interesting note here that uh, the King picked up on. The Rock did not come out here with the tag team title that he held with Mankind at the time. So this had a pretty fun build to it. The Rock hit the rock bottom on the Bulldog into some dog crap or bull crap, whatever it was. Uh, I think a big platter of dog crap. Uh, Michael Cole making the most famous call. Into the dog poop. <laughs> Um, they replayed that, you know, dozens of times on uh, the promo package. It This match, I felt, could have been a lot better. There was a lot to go through on this show. After the match, The Rock cuts the promo and says he's challenging the winner of... Uh, or it might have been after this, but... Um, Yeah, it was after this, but whatever, we'll talk about it now. He comes back out before the main event, and he says he's challenging The Rock or Triple H, or uh, Austin or Triple H, whoever wins the match. And he's challenging them, and it looks like he's all good until he's about to go backstage. Triple H comes out, beats the hell out of him with the sledgehammer, and he puts the boots to The Rock. 
So that'll play up into our main event. Sixth match of the night is a Terry Invitational Tournament for $100,000 in cash to Edger Christian or the Hardys. This would be the first tag team ladder match in WWE history. Meltzer liked it. He gave it four and a half stars. So pretty, pretty big match here. And, you know, for years, Meltzer did not give WWE anything. I think prior to this, it had to be uh, Austin and uh, Brett at uh, WrestleMania. So this match is so crazy. It's probably the match a lot of people have seen. Go watch that match. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It's uh, it's awesome. We got Gangrel getting booted out of there early on. And they are doing crazy stuff like power bombs off the, uh, off the ladder. We're doing splashes into the ladder. Um, you know, the double clothesline where one, one guy rolls over and then the drop kick. This stuff was really cool at the time. You know, by now we've seen, you know, eight men, ten men in a ladder match just, you know, ramped up to a, a 12 or 13 in some of these. They did the cool spot with the seesaw ladders with Jeff Hardy hitting both Christian and Matt. Um, and then towards the end, all four men are going for it. And then they all get knocked down. They set the ladders up a little bit differently and all four go back up. It's Edge and Matt Hardy, Christian and Jeff on the other one. Matt Hardy gets knocked off by Edge. He bounces off the ropes, tips the other one over. Jeff Hardy steps over onto the ladder with Edge, knocks Edge off, and he he can't get it. He can't get it. He falls onto the ground with the money and... Uh, the Hardy Boys win this little TIT tournament and they're celebrating with champagne. Terry looks amazing here. Matt Hardy just going crazy. <laughs> He's got this bag of money. It looks looks really fun here. It's also uh, Vince Russo left the company a couple of weeks prior to this. Uh, reported in the Observer, I believe the uh, either the 11th edition or the October I think 17th or 18th edition so Gorilla Monsoon also passed away uh, around this time I think the week or two prior to this as well very sad news to see Gorilla Monsoon uh, pass away you know he was a, a big part of the WWF back in the early to mid 80s and you know, we seen him at WrestleMania 15, and he got a hell of a reaction. He hadn't been doing too good uh, the months or weeks leading up to this pay-per-view. And, you know, they said their, their final goodbyes. There's a cool video package uh, on YouTube, so look up Gorilla Monsoon uh, Tribute. And I think that's what they played on uh, on Raw or something around that time. So rest in peace, Gorilla Monsoon. He was a, he was always a, a awesome color commentator, you know, play by play guy. You know, with Bobby Heenan and Ventura, those were some classic uh, announced teams. Seventh match of the night: Val Venus versus Mankind, and they were building up Val Venus pretty well around this time. Uh, he had more aggression to him. He wasn't the uh, Hello Ladies baby face. Uh, more aggression. The year after this, they're going to pair him with Trish Stratus. So I thought they had a lot of stock into a Val Venus here. Um, I always liked him, you know, not just for his promos, but he was fairly good in the ring as well. I'm pretty underrated Val Venus. You know, during Heat, uh, mankind who thought he gave his book to the rock he gives it to Val Venus Val Venus would later on read you know things out of Foley's book on on Raw and Smackdown so these guys have a decent match uh, and the rock cut his promo before this so 
Mankind spends most of this match looking for Rocco, which is in Venus's tights. Um, it comes down to a double claw, the mandible claw and the testicular claw from Rocco and Sacco. A uh, very bizarre type match. Um, and, uh, Val Venus ends up winning the match. Mankind does get his after the match, and he gets Rocco back, and he hits the double claw on Val Venus. So he's happy to get his book, his Rocco, and they're all partying together. You know, Mankind was awesome. You know, the Rock and Saw connection. They did a lot of fun stuff with that. This is some good times here. Fourth, or, uh... Eighth match of the night is a fatal four-way elimination between the Acolytes, Kane, and X-Pac. Um, decent match, actually. You know, I'm not sure what Meltzer gave this one, but... Uh, it's pretty much a tag match, so... You know, the Acolytes are tagging in and out. Kane and X-Pac are tagging in and out. Kane and X-Pac go at it at, at, a, at a time. Um... Kane choke slams Bradshaw. He's out of there. X Pac with a big old heel kick to Kane. Kane's gone. Farouk ends up blocking the Bronco Buster. Goes for a sh uh, shoulder block off the top rope. X Pac sees that coming. Hits the X Factor. One, two, three. X Pac wins this match, surprisingly. Uh, X Pac and Kane, that, that was another awesome part of this era. You know, sadly, they broke up, I believe, way too soon. That lasted about six months or so. So this is a, this is in October. So six or seven months is, you know, decent, I guess, for two guys thrown together. Ninth match of the night. And the main event for the World Wrestling Federation Championship, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Triple H, the WWF champion, no holds barred. This was a pretty fun match here for the championship. I always liked Austin and Triple H's matches. They always had this intensity to it. And, you know, everyone just wanted to see Austin win the, the title back here. Um, so this one starts in the aisle way. They brawl through the crowd. Remember, there's no holds barred in this. And... See a pretty good ref bump early on. I believe the referee here was uh, either Tim White or Kyoto. Austin hits the stunner. There's no referee. Pedigree. Earl ends up running in to make the count. Uh, these guys go in and out of the ring again. Triple H hits the face buster. Back and forth once again. And the rock comes down. Grabbing the sludge hammer. Uh, he goes to hit Triple H. Triple H ducks the sludge hammer. Rock ends up nailing uh, Austin right in the gut with that hammer. Pedigree to the Rock. Triple H covers Austin. One, two, three. To retain the WWF title. Pretty creative finish here. Um, you know, it plays into what happened early on in the night with... With Triple H attacking The Rock. It'll play up into the Survivor Series with uh, the triple threat they're kind of building into. So, I really like this finish. I like the match overall. Um, after the match, Triple H ch or, uh, Austin chases Triple H backstage. And Triple H gets into a limo with China. So both uh, Triple H and China are now the WWF and IC champs. They wouldn't play into that too much on TV. This goes about 2 hours, 45 minutes, the whole pay-per-view. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. I think that's a solid mark for this pay-per-view. Um, let me know your thoughts, guys. And what were your favorite matches from this show? I know a lot of people love that ladder match. Uh, the No Holds Barred match pretty cool to watch so let me know your thoughts we got uh 
the next two lined up with the Survivor Series 99 from Detroit and Armageddon 99. So you're going to be two fantastic shows. So that's uh, episode 31, WWF No Mercy 1999 from the Gund Arena. So this is, uh, as always, we'll talk to you later. Peace.